Could you be thrown out of a plane into a burning forest? Sacrifice a fancy salary to save animals? Or spend life in a maximum security prison, working to keep kids out? Worthy causes or extreme jobs? Once a forest fire gets going, stopping it can be exhausting and deadly work. You might be surprised to learn these fires are in the boreal forests of Siberia. Snow and cold weather don't necessarily equal fireproof. Siberia's forest firefighters are in constant demand. We're getting to the target area. Wait for the signal. We'll jump at a thousand meters. Dima Krosnetsi is a smoke jumper. After 17 years on the job, he takes home 80 euros a month. Not a bad wage in these parts. But no one here does this work just for the money. Despite the big freezing winter, summers are hot and dry, even under the snow. The undergrowth can be like tinder and extremely flammable. Lightning and people easily start fires. Being a smoke jumper here takes on a new meaning when you think that Siberia is three times the size of Alaska and home to the biggest unbroken areas of forest anywhere in the world. You need a head for parachuting from a thousand meters and to know how to keep it cool once on the ground. Winds whipped up by the inferno can suck a jumper right in. There are many people who think I'm crazy because I risk my life for this money, but I know what I'm doing. As many as 30,000 fires rage across Siberia every year. May and June are the busiest months. It's not just the northern area. Practically the whole region is burning. Get ready. Faster. Faster. A quick briefing is all they've got time for. Dima's six-strong team need to move out. In this job, you need to think on your feet. Idris, see with the helicopter. Aside from parachute gear, there's not too much to learn about the equipment. It's pretty basic stuff. Just a small hose, a spade, and a box of matches. Everything okay to fly? And it's not just the carry-on gear that could do with updating. The choppers are old civilian MI8s. Commander Kasim. Firestorm clear for takeoff. Target coordinates, please. Don't expect any seatbelts either. In this job, you need to see the cause you're fighting as more important than your own safety. Is it the target area? Yes, that's the closest we can get. In a single year, fire burned 25,000 square kilometers of forest. Dima's challenge today is to find a place to make a safe drop. Once down, the job could take a week. Smoke jumpers need endurance and wilderness survival skills. Anatoly, Dima's boss, gives today's orders. Dima, you're in charge of setting up our communications. Igor, get the base camp ready. The rest of you, follow me. Hoses out first to beat down isolated pockets of fire. Much bigger blazes further on will need bigger weapons. A converted B-12 military plane is on hand. It's a scooping plane with a capacity of six tons of water, a rare concession to modernity. The plane gives Anatoly and Dima a chance to put the ground plan into action. 
Incredible. The best way to fight fire is with fire. Extremely risky, but it's on the job description. We must approach the fire with great care. We can't count our burns anymore. But compared to the fire, the smoke is even more dangerous. It will suffocate you within minutes. Part of the strategy is to dig a trench to act as a fire break, then to light a fire from the opposite direction. In theory, when the two fires meet, they should burn themselves out because there's no vegetation to catch light. It's cabbage soup and buckwheat porridge on tonight's menu, but tomorrow is set to bring more back-breaking work. But there's an unforeseen complication. Dima, come in, please. Please reply. Receiving. Can you hear me well? Yes. Anatoly has hurt his leg. We are not sure how badly. They are coming to pick him up. How did it happen? There are no records of how many smoke jumpers die on the job. But every year, as many as five will go home with broken legs. With his boss out of action, Dima must complete the trench before the flames cut them off. The second fire, lit by Dima, is a calculated gamble. It will either save vast swathes of forests or destroy even more. Could you face infernos in the world's biggest tinderbox? You won't have much in the way of equipment, but if you make it out alive, chances are you'll feel pretty good about yourself. Siberia is my motherland, and its forests are worth being saved by me. Can having a good cause work for everyone, even those on the inside? Coming up later. But first, would you brave northern Atlantic waters to save a mother and her calf and do this all year round? Step inside the world of the porpoise paramedic. The eastern Canadian province of New Brunswick. Headquarters of the Grand Manan Whale and Seabird Research Centre. Andrew Westgate is a senior scientist and one of the world's leading marine doctors. He'll rescue anything, but porpoises are a particular favourite. Porpoises are darting by you. They're very, very good swimmers. Incredibly agile animals underwater and they're fast and they know exactly where you are at all times. And here in the Bay of Fundy, porpoises tend to get into trouble a lot. Which is why Andrew turned his training as a marine biologist into a day job with a difference. Come in slowly. 9 a.m. The daily briefing for Andrew's team of biologists and volunteers is interrupted by a call from local fishermen. Just one of the things Andrew does is run an emergency rescue service for marine mammals. A mother and calf are caught in a fishing net and under huge stress. They could die from exhaustion. Andrew's paid field assistants, on around 200 euros a week, load the boat with life-saving equipment. Meanwhile, he goes on ahead. It will take an hour to get there. Killing porpoises is illegal, but it still happens. Yep, we're at the weir. Uh, the marine paramedic needs good public relations skills, 
as you'll often rely on the fishing community to report accidents. Andrew's on good terms with local fishermen, and it's paying off. We like to work together. I mean, years ago, it's, it wasn't like that, and it was a lot of unfortunate things happened that, you know, that don't happen anymore because of this group. The net's curved shape confuses fish and porpoises. Andrew must be diplomatic. Wait for the fisherman's job to end before he starts his. Unlike fish, mammals must surface to breathe. In this trap, the porpoises will drown. In Andrew's job, there are three main priorities. Rescue, first aid, and re-release. Hard physical and mental work and the challenge of saving a threatened species month after month. Andrew's first into the chilly 10 degree waters, but the sea drove his passion for this job. The immediate task focuses on getting the porpoises into a hammock and onto the boat. In water, a porpoise is almost as heavy as a person and much more agile. If the mother panics, she could bump into Andrew and knock him unconscious. With 15 years' experience in marine science, Andrew knows how to handle a frightened porpoise. The mother swims erratically, probably injured. Now, try getting her into this tiny, pitching boat for first aid. If they can't, the mother will die. Which means so will the calf. Ready? Ready? Go. In this job, the goalposts are constantly shifting. They've now reached a critical point. The animals are on board. They now need to get out to the open sea where the porpoises can be re-released if they're healthy. Andrew makes a quick decision, an emergency stop. It was a good call. The calf's skin is drying out. It needs to be dipped back into the water. Gently does it. But the mother is in danger of slipping into shock. Stress, fatigue. They all take their toll on Andrew's team too. Particularly with one animal in the water, the other on board. Finally, there's good news. The mother is fine, but Andrew takes blood samples for further analysis back home. Good. 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 Kids fine. Mom is shaking a bit. Yeah. Now, if you could jump down here and stand in front of me now. Yeah, I wonder what would going on. Couldn't bring her up. Normally when you're hands-on, they just shut it down. But... They've got 20 minutes yeah, before she fine. must be returned to the I'm water. The main danger is that the calf will be scared off and lose its mother. With tags and small radio transmitters in place, they can be tracked after release. Finally, the big payoff. The joy of releasing an unharmed calf back into the water. Mother is next. Stretch your back. Mm -hmm. Back. Okay, hey, buddy. You're out. With mother and baby reunited, the team head back to base. Andrew's work is tough but at least it isn't lonely. His group is part of a network of like-minded people around the world, all working for little money 
but big emotional payback. This research station has saved more than 700 porpoises over the past 13 years. It's a hard battle, as thousands are killed globally every year. Today's rescue mission was typical. Freezing water, the burden of knowing you can make the difference between life and death, and then home to a pile of paperwork. Interested? Good causes don't come cheap. And if you live on the wrong side of the tracks in Railway, New Jersey, they don't come easy. Life here can be hard and mean. Enter a man with a message. And although it's one of salvation, he's no preacher. In fact, he lives in East Jersey State Prison with about 2,000 other inmates. High security means hardcore convicts. But Stefan Bird is different. He's turned his jail sentence into a new job. His trade? Educating kids against doing time. He's certainly qualified. Convicted for manslaughter, he's now seen the error of his ways. I was originally given 44 years with an 18-year stipulation. Stefan killed a man when he was only 21. Now 31. He's had 10 years to reflect on his crime. Sometimes I look around and I, and I ask myself, is, is this what life about? He spends 18 hours a day in a cell, measuring two metres by three metres. Hardly an office, but a place to work out how best to help those on the outside. I think prison saved my life, you know, especially when I look back in the direction that I was headed. You know, I, I was young, you know, I, I didn't care about nothing. You know, I was carrying guns, you know, I was robbing, I was selling drugs. 64,000 youths are arrested every year in New Jersey for muggings, robberies, drug use, and sometimes murder. With the prison service's blessing, Stefan is working to stop the rot. Every day, Kids already on the wrong side of the law come into the jail to meet Stefan. His job? Speak their language and shock them into mending their ways before it's too late. I want to take the children off the path they're on and I don't want to see them spending the rest of their lives in someone's prison. Lavon Anderson, 14, lives in New Jersey and is surrounded by around 300 murders a year. I see bad things around my house, like kids go around beating up people, taking their money. It gets worse every time I see it. Stefan is employed by the Scared Straight Prison Program. It's a tough job, even for tough men. But they're driven by their own broken lives. We ain't just telling y'all this, we showing. Levon's parents are determined their son learns from Stefan's efforts. Levon's uncle has already done time. You have a choice, right and wrong. Stefan wants to keep this kid on the streets and hopes his first look inside a jail will be his last. First point of contact. Prison guards who don't pull their punches even with 10-year-olds. Everybody paying attention. And if you don't want to pay attention, get the f out of here. After talking to these jokers for how many years, it all starts out with the small things. Disrespecting moms, pops, aunts, uncles. What do you do with the dog when a Brutal reality of life in jail slowly sinks in. Time. Second time you rub its nose in it. Stefan's job description doesn't extend to handling weapons, so the guard pitches in. What becomes a weapon in here? Anything and everything. A simple little thing like a clipboard, just like the one that I carry. The guy puts the tape on in reverse, sharpen it up a little bit, and you start slicing with this today. Take a look at it and pass it back handle first. Take a real good look at it. It was horrible. My first impression, I was scared and nervous, shaky. 
And like I said, seeing it. Now for real shock tactics. Well rehearsed by the lifers group. Didn't even know from a can of paint. But see, he defied the odds. He lived. Also, seeing the pictures, very harsh. Guys hanging themselves, blood everywhere. Guy under his bed, bleeding, dying. Don't start crying now, fool. Face forward. Right up on his ass. Right up on his ass. And I hope you don't like it. I hope you don't like it. And they're not even inside the restricted area. The guard merely softens them up before Stefan and the other convicted killers take over. One precaution. Hands are stamped with ultraviolet ink to mark them out as visitors. Right hand. At first, when I got the stamp, I was nervous. Right hand. I kept checking to make sure it was there. Everybody get their hands stamped. Yes. Take a look to your left. Six visit booths for 1,600 jokers for an hour in duration. Over a third of the inmates are in for drug-related offenses, many more for violent crime. 1,000 are serving life sentences. I keep wondering if my stamp is still there because my hands are sweaty. And what will I do if it did come off? Stefan is sure his new job helps. When the children come here, um, it definitely make me think back to when I was their age. Close 13, please. I hope to save at least one child a day Yo, understand where you at, man. Hey, yo, you seen something funny when you came in here, man? You in a maximum security prison, man. And you better listen up today, man, because it's your life, man, that we trying to save, man. Not mines, already forfeited mines, man. But it's reality time, man. This is the only experience you're going to get without being in here, man. So uh, listen up today and understand, man, where you at, man. You know what I mean? Because the only life you save is your own, man. Now get back in line. The cell hammers home the lesson. This is what we gonna be resigning at for the rest of our life. This is like an eight by twelve cell. You understand? You see? You feel the heat in here? Stretch your arms out. The cell is wall. very small. I can stretch my arms out and I can touch both walls. Is this where y'all wanna come? Is this where y'all wanna come? Parts of the jail are just too violent for children, even on this course. Once we get into the auditorium at the end of the session. This is the time where we feel that it's our last time to reach out to these children. We fight just to live, man, and live just to fight, man. That's what this prison is about, man. It breed nothing but death and destruction, man. So it's up to y'all today, man, to get this message, man. Take it home and incorporate it in your life, man. The language of psychological persuasion, a skill learned on the job, officially sanctioned and brutally applied. This is prison outreach in reverse and it's a full-time commitment. Put your right hand underneath the light and move up towards the front. Move them up tight, Troy. Right hand underneath the light and move up towards the front. Move it up tight, move it up tight. Underneath, underneath. It's a relief that I can see the stamp on my hand, knowing that I don't have to stay there. I would never, ever want to see the cell again. All in a day's work for Stefan, who's always on the move with new ideas. New inmates are coming in here all the time that no one else was able to reach. And we really strive to save at least one of them. Free men need not apply for this trade. It's reserved for those who've already reached the end of the line. But it's a job which Stefan does to turn his own life around and to save others. Three tough jobs. They won't make you rich, and they won't make you famous. It's feeling good about yourself, worth the sacrifice.